Hi, everyone. Welcome to Stuff Explained, where we, well, explain stuff. Today, we'll be talking about the Cold War. The Cold War was a conflict between the United States and the Soviet Union from the end of World War II to the collapse of the USSR in the 1990s. This war, in which no direct conflict erupted between sides, ushered in the nuclear and eventual space age, most notably in the form of the space race, which reached its peak in the 1960s. But what was the space race, and how does it define our post-Cold War world of today? Now let's go back to where it all began, the end of the Second World War and the start of the Cold War. After the fall of the Axis powers in World War II, two global superpowers arose, the capitalist United States and the communist Soviet Union. The two nuclear-armed powerhouses struggled for international dominance. However, no direct fighting happened between both sides, because nukes. Hence we get the term, the Cold War. Got it? Good. Instead of full-scale conflict, the Soviet Union and the United States partook in various proxy wars, small-scale conflicts that did not involve both powers directly. Both provided money, technology, and intel to a certain side in another war to promote their influence over the hopeful victor. Wars in Korea, Afghanistan, Cuba, and Lake Placid are all considered proxy wars because the United States and the Soviets never directly squared off in these conflicts. Uh, okay, maybe not the last one, but this did lead to some awkward circumstances, like the U.S. supporting the genocidal Guatemalan president Efrian Rios Montt in the Guatemalan Civil War. But hey, at least he wasn't communist, so he must be cool. Small-scale skirmishes now became global battles between communism and capitalism. Both superpowers were always seeking venues to one-up the other, and space exploration was just another extension of that conflict, a new frontier to display superiority and expand spheres of influence. On October 4, 1957, the Soviet Union launched into space the Sputnik, the first artificial satellite. According to Gary Clark's The Space Race and the Cold War, quote, The launch of the Sputnik was a wake-up call. Americans feared that the world would see the Soviet system as superior. This advancement drove fear into the hearts of Americans because, quote, The feeling was that if the Russians could get a satellite into space, then, then they could probably land a warhead on American soil as well. The space race had begun. In a scramble to compete, the U.S. established the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, or NASA, in 1958. However, the U.S. fell behind in the race when the Soviets launched Laika the Dog into space, proving that Earth beings could survive in a zero-G environment. Later, the Soviets sent cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin into space on April 12, 1961. A few weeks later, the U.S. launched astronaut Alan Shepard in the Freedom 7. However, the U.S. was still losing. NASA needed a passionate Herb Brooks speech to rally the troops. <laughs> what? They didn't? Huh? <sighs> Actually, NASA needed to do something space-related that would launch the Americans ahead of the Soviets. <laughs> bad pun is bad. <laughs> On September 2nd, 1962, in Rice Stadium, President John F. Kennedy addressed America about his groundbreaking plan to land a man on the moon. Kennedy expressed his priority to keep the stars out of Soviet hands. For the eyes of the world, now look into space, to the moon, 
and to the planets beyond. And we have vowed that we shall not see it governed by a hostile flag of conquest, but by a banner of freedom and peace. By the end of the decade, Kennedy had commissioned NASA to put a man on the moon, a feat that would blow the Soviets out of the water. Because here's a shocker, getting to the moon is hard. I mean, you have to get fragile humans out of the Earth's atmosphere, which did I mention is really hot, and keep them alive in the desolate nothingness of space, which did I mention is really cold. In fact, it's so cold that it doesn't even have a temperature, which uh, makes sense if you're one of these guys. No, seriously, ask them. They're nice people. Never mind once you're on the moon, you have to get back. Yet, all of this happened. On July 20th, 1969, astronaut Neil Armstrong opened the door of his lunar module, proclaiming the famous words, One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. The Soviets did not make another successful attempt at the moon. The space race was over. America had won. But how did the space race change the course of human history? The space race cemented the view that the free world was superior to communism, that American democracy could overcome Soviet totalitarianism. The effort focused American innovation to achieve the most astounding advancements in human history, and contributed to the fall of the USSR. Many of the impacts of these great minds are still enjoyed today in the form of NASA spin-off technologies, like the vacuum and the airbag. Yes, you can thank that clean rug to rocket scientists. The space race was also a defining moment in America's fight against the spread of communism and a golden age of space technology. Most of all, it proved the American resolve against a challenge. As John F. Kennedy said in his speech at Rice, We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone, and one we intend to win, and the others too. And we did.